All right, guys, the video you're about to see, um, you'll have to watch it all the way through. There's a couple of places where it looks like the video, or it sounds like it's fixing the end, where I'm kind of wrapping things up, but then some other scene come along that I put on after that. So just make make sure you watch it all the way through. There's a one spot about 20 minutes into it, it looks like I'm fixing a sign off for good but uh there's some good really good shots on the on the other end of that uh make sure you watch it the entirety i covered a lot of ground in this video uh from walking on a railroad trestle a hundred foot up uh and just various things and again yeah i'm sorry about not having any daytime ride uh, all the shots are during the dark are riding, but I'm going to be heading out tomorrow morning, and, uh, the video after this one will be a lot of daytime riding, so you'll get to see a lot more. Uh, every day I'm still feeling better, uh, regardless of the voice. Uh, it's just I have to force air, like, three or four times as hard to form words. So once I get back out on the rails, I'll be alone and have no reason to talk except for in a video. So that'll give my vocal cords a rest. Anyway, uh, enjoy the video. Well, hello everybody. Uh, I, I took some sore throat tablets so I wouldn't sound so hoarse, but for those of you not on my community page, you're not aware that five days after I got out of my surgery healing up nice, I ended up getting the COVID again. And that was the worst 10 days of my life, worse than the original COVID two years ago. Man, I was bedridden for nearly two dang weeks. But finally, they gave me some steroids and that cleared it up after five days except for the hoarseness so i'm kind of straining here but i feel well enough to ride besides the sore throat uh just got down here a little too late they already crew changed and taken off but the surgery went well i'm healed up uh it's just a series of bad luck when I got that damn COVID five days after surgery for the second time. But that's just to update you on the medical. So, yeah, I might have been here 30 minutes earlier. There's a coil car there. An old Conrail car. So I'm all packed, got two gallons of water, got all my food. Me and Larry stopped by Waffle House and got, uh, got some breakfast. And I'm now waiting on a train, so the next thing, better chance, next thing is going to be an IM. They normally never run two jumps back to back. I'm going to try not to talk unless I have to. But yeah, uh, the other day I, I took my brand new black Carhartt double front pants, let the water fill up in the washer, and poured a quarter cup of bleach to sanitize them, and look what happened to them. Not one blemish or unevenness. I like these better than they were black. I mean, they came out perfect brown. So me and Larry think they probably originally were brown, but they just add black dye to them to make them black. But can you believe that, how good they came out with a quarter cup of bleach in the wash? 
Anyway. see a DPU yet but if there's no DPU usually they'll stop in Roanoke and yard the train and switch out some stuff so it's there four or five hours but the tail end usually goes on later four or five hours I hear them blowing at State Line Road. Oh, you, know, you could ride down in there. We've been having perfect weather here. Highs in the upper 70s and lows in the 50s. Oh, nice lip grainer. Come on, stop, baby. I'll get on. Back when I was 20, 25 years old, I could nearly catch this. He's doing about 18 miles an hour here. Ooh, I'm getting hoarse again. Yeah, on top of that COVID, I ended up getting pneumonia. But after they gave me the antibiotics and that steroid, Lord, that help. I wish they had gave it to me earlier. There's the DPU. He'll be going to Hagerstown in Harrisburg. Yep, that's going to Harrisburg. Damn. I want to get a give a shout out to George. George is a friend of mine from California. Who contacted me. He sent me a cool little subway car with graffiti on the side of it. I'll try to show it to you if in this video if I get the time or make it back in time on the same video. Man, that would have been perfect train if we had been down here 20 minutes earlier. I, of course, that DPU was way back, and I wouldn't have known though, unless I'd have taken a a walk back down there and seen it. He, we just missed that down there at Piney Flats. Yeah, he had to rode through because that looked fresh where he. The, the, both of the lights are still red. And yeah, once you cross that light, the green light, it'll turn red. It resets that light once that you hit it. Does that mean something, the next one's coming this way? 
Oh, it couldn't right now with him being on the same block. They'll have to wait till it resets and then they'll do a uh, track warrant and then reset it green. He but, kept blowing and blowing and blowing. Yeah. I heard him keep blowing. And he was past State Line Road. Yeah, he was way on down through there. Kept blowing and blowing. I mean, he blew 15 times. There could have been some yard workers he was blowing at too to get out of the way. Sometimes they do that. Now, this track is only for them. Yeah, what the uh, those grainers that have the plastic in them, they come down. I'll show you where they unload them. That pipe that goes across there. Oh, that was your. I'm going to show everybody where this track leads to. And you can tell it, it ain't seen nothing in a while. I've only seen twice where they had one uh, grainer down here. Is it for, it's not for this factory right here, is it? Man, that's aggravating. That, uh, I know. I bet that DPU was down there at, at that road. Yeah, right close there, to where that. Tooties, where Tooties is in the food city? Yeah, Spruce Road. Yeah, but it was right in there. Yeah, this is where they either suck out or blow in that plastic. Oh, okay, it goes across over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, they hook pipes up to that into the bottom of the grainer. And it goes across the road over there to the, to the big holding tank. Yeah, I, I'm tagged in on it somewhere. Yeah, you can see the bottom of my tag there. Yeah. I thought it was in red. Huh, they must not use that a whole lot. No, nah, I've only seen two, and I, I've never seen people out here uh, loading it or unloading it. But I think it's to load it so they can make plastic bottles for whatever they make here. Yeah. Looks like they did some painting over the tags. But yeah, me and Colby and his friend, we was up there one winter morning when it was snowing and a DPU stopped right here and I didn't, I didn't have a way to get in. Well, somebody's had some campfire down here since. It's cleaned up down here, too. Yeah, there's... Last time I tagged... January 14th of 21. Yeah, they painted over uh, Wondering Wolf, Kobe's. On the other side, there's some tags, too, but they may have uh, painted over it, too. Yeah. yeah, when the trains come, I always hide behind. I don't want anybody ratting, because they know that's why you're down here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they painted over all the tags. But sometimes I'll I'll go right around here and hide in the in the thicket there right on the line. I'd stay out of the bushes with the ticks. Oh yeah. If if I don't remember, remind me and I'll douse down my ankles and all. Yeah, check out how good them pants came out. Quarter cup of bleach did that in a, a washing machine. Yeah, you can tell there is how, how often. But yeah, just twice in four years I've seen Hopper down here. And I've never seen them loading or unloading. I remember one night I come here and there was a... I know he was a meth head. It was dark, but I kept seeing the cigarette lighter flick about every eight seconds. Yeah. Yeah, smoking that stuff. There used to be a clump of trees past that. See where that goes over, where they unload? But yeah, they, they cut it. They graded that lot out over there. Yeah, they cut all them trees out. That whole jungle's cut out down there. And those houses, one of them houses is the one that reported me when I got on. So when we got to Abingdon, that's where that bull was waiting. Two weeks later, I got seen again by some rail buffs up by the station and pulled me off and having it again. 
But that first time he pulled me off, he goes, if I see you again, I'm putting you in jail. But he, he didn't do it that second time. Huh. But I'm not going to say where this is. Uh, I've had a few people kind of get pissed that I'm letting people know, which is stupid because no one's going to come all the way down here who's never ridden and try to ride a train. Well, that'll be the last jump train northbound for a while. All right, now to check out the, well, somebody was given a, a present to the homeless and they didn't want to haul it around. I don't know what that is, it's got a wine bottle next to the Bible. <laughs> Well, I should have put that bug spray on a little higher. There's my old camp back there. It's kind of growed up, so ain't nobody been back here in a while. Yeah. Uh, check out. <coughs> Here's the main line. If I can get up. Quite empty yard. There's all the stuff likely going to be picked up to go south. Now this very well may be the Radford cut. There'll be a northbound come in later in night and they'll pull up, drop some cars on yard track two or three back back up back back into these pick these up back back down to the rest of the train on main which we're on tie up air up and go now sometimes the entire train gets started at radford then again sometimes they'll just set off the cars they picked up here at radford and go on but if that ever happens and goes on out of Radford, they're likely going to yard the whole drain in Roanoke, which is a biatch to try and re-catch a new train out of Roanoke. As you can tell, I'm out of shape, which doesn't matter. I need to do this anyway to slowly, slowly get back in shape. Can't do it too fast. Now I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't if I knew I couldn't. I've been getting exercise slowly every day building my uh system up. The more I talk, usually the worse my throat gets during the day, but when I wake up in the morning it's back better again. But every day it's a little better, so uh, that steroids really help. At least I know what to ask for next time, if there is a next time. All right, the angle cock is turned. What that means is northbound train will come in back in, go back into the front of these cars, hook the air hose up, and air cannot be pushed past that valve since it's closed which means he has brake pressure see now the air goes through and out the bottom of the hose but now it's ready to pick up that's like it was so now the air brakes can be applied when it's angle cock that's called an angle cock valve so he's got braking ability once he presses above 75 pounds per square inch but they like to fully release at 90 psi and that's what they run out on the on the road out on the rails is 90 psi that way they know they got full release no friction no dragging whatsoever i'm gonna check the cars out 
see what they got. Because a lot of times what I'll do when I find a cut like this that's going on, I go ahead and just get on it. That way, I'm already picked my car, I'm already rolled out and relaxed. The only problem is, is when they hook it up to the train going on, that worker's got to walk by to get back up to the engine. So just lay low or get off and hide in the bushes till he walks by and then creep back over and get on. But, all right. Counting the cars. Usually there's a box car or two that are empty on this slough that's going to Radford and Roanoke. So we shall see. And let's take a gander at the springs. Yep. Hay's loaded. It probably was some kind of asphalt stuff. It's hot. Insulated tanks. That stuff will stay hot for weeks. So well insulated with a honeycomb type insulation. Sort of like they insulated the uh, large tank on the space shuttle. That red large tank that sits under the space shuttle. Not the two booster solid rocket boosters on the side, but the big red one. That tank is insulated very well. It's got to keep that liquid oxygen at a certain temperature, like minus 380. All right, that's a lip grainer is what we call it. Not the full exact, I can't say the full name. All right, so it's the first car. And usually when they're on a cut like this, they also manually break down too. Not only is the axle brake zone, but the manual brake zone. And to release that, all he does is come along and take his handle and pull it out. And it automatically, that chain tension releases. Which in return, releases the brakes off the axles. All right, and he is a cut going north. Yes, sir, Bob. And see how it angle cocks open. He'll hook that air hose up to the back engine. And he'll radio back to the worker on the end to make sure his valve's closed. And once he acknowledges that, the engineer will push air back to release the brakes. All right, that's enough as far as the teaching of today. Let's hope this is recording. All right, now here's another thing to look at. See those little piles? You'll see them in yards a lot. There's a couple of more little gray piles. That's how you know train comes in and sits for a while. If they got time enough to leak that stuff out, then they sit a while. But that looks like breaking sand. Uh, so it could have been some engines that sit here, but... Nah, it's, it's sand, all right, but... It probably come out of a... Yeah, there's one off-centered. So yeah, that came out of a railroad car, not an engine. That gives you an idea how long trains sit in a yard waiting to crew change. <laughs> Boy, that was a big cat buried his stuff there. <laughs> a bob cat. A bob saget cat. Funniest cat you ever met. Alright, making our way back. Making my way back to you. Yeah, I hear my voice how scraggly. I hear something. Ah, oh, it's a motorcycle. 
Uh, trying to wonder if I ought to go north or southbound. Uh, hate to go through Roanoke, but anyway, let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cars. I think I can't quite see down to that last. Oh, 30, 40 foot of them. All right. Yeah, I sprayed a bunch of that rappel on. Tips are really bad this year. I sure don't want to get sucked on. Lose blood. All righty. I'm going to go on to the next scene, guys. Alright, now. Yeah, I cleared a lot of this out to make it easier. That way the next next riders that come through don't have such a difficult time getting up. Chop your feet in sideways, that way that gravel lays out level. <sighs> but I try not to break too much out of the way because you want some of that stuff hidden. Like a lot of people like chopping them weeds back out of the way, but no, I like to stay pretty hid like this. This is perfect weight day, weight on your drain camp. Hang you a hammock back here. And that's all she blows. And now the weight begins. I'm catching me a train. Alright, this may be my northbound. Yeah, let me grab my gear. I finally made it.
get off here in a bit. Got to try to get off before the Roanoke yard. Don't want that bull to get me there. Cleveland this main line going to Chicago this way now there's a split up here too to go to the left to the south to go to that new new Baltimore new Boston IM yard you don't want to end up there that's why I don't dare try to ride a IM through here even if it was safe and I had a chance. Don't want to end up in that IM yard. But, um, guess who is picking me up? Matt Mantell. Matt Mantell on YouTube. Look him up. M A T T. M-A-N-T-E-L-L. -L. He's got some train videos from around Medina, Ohio. So, I'm going to let him know where I'm at and spend a day or two with him. Uh, catch up on old times. Well, hello. Uh, I made it to Matt. Got, that's a small... Uh, green egg, the egg barbecue, and there's a bigger one. Uh, got got some pork on it. Well, here's the old B and O. Now it's the Wheeling and Lake Erie, and the city of Medina owns this section here. It services a concrete place where they recycle concrete and then up here is a candle factory we're fixing to walk up to you want to add anything matt about no, no you've probably seen my videos a thousand times the trains coming through here but this is always my favorite section because uh it's so steep i don't know what percentage of a grade it is but um it's real steep and then there's a real sharp corner and um, you shared one of my videos, uh, I think from this past winter, where they had a derailment up. Remember? Oh, remember yeah, that one? yeah, yeah. That happened right up here on the on the uh, sharpest part of the corner. So. Uh, I bet there's still some scars left. I think there is. We'll, well, we'll check it out. All right. And these here are the wax? Yeah, so this is where they bring the wax in for the candle. It's called root candle here in Medina. And if you look real close, you can see those tanks are completely covered with wax. Like it, I don't know, like whatever process they use, it like sticks to the outside oh, of the tanks. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, it's kind of neat. But yeah, they, they must melt it down in there or something. I wonder if they just keep it hot all the time. I don't know, I, I'm not sure, but I, I think back in the day they used to bring it in by rail, but I, like I was telling you earlier, that they bring it in by, uh, uh, truck now that comes in like a tanker truck and I've seen them like they have like a big hose that they hook up to it and yeah uh, I'd, I'd be fascinated that it smells like vanilla yeah yeah they must be making vanilla candles today and then 
they have this like steam pipe and you've probably seen it in my videos before but they're always venting that steam out of there from whatever they're they're doing that steam pipe pretty much runs 24 7. see if i can find it I did right see it. There. But, um, yeah, there's, I've seen uh, pictures of this whole area back like a hundred years ago, and it was all tracks in here. So, kind of a neat. Well, imagine if they were carrying that hot wax on a tank car and it derailed in yeah, front man. of you. Uh, it would be an EPA nightmare. Oh, man. <laughs> Forget hazmat and OSHA. Right. <laughs> oh, there's, I see that yeah, pipe now. It may be just removing moisture out of the. Yeah, I think that's all it is. Like an accumulator type. Yep. It's a, I'd love to know, I'd love to know their, uh, their process here. But. Another cool thing is, I've seen on a couple of the Medina websites, they have a couple of old steam engines in there that they used to, I don't know if they made power with them or what, if they ran the process with them, but um, yeah, they're like these big giant antique steam engines. And now they, you know, use electric motors or whatever, but it's, it's pretty cool. Somebody was talking about wanting to restore one, I think, at one time. And, and what? What company, what do they call this candle? Uh, root candle. In fact, root. it's on that truck right over there. Oh, they, you can see that truck. Oh, the over? trailer here? Yeah, that's one of their delivery trucks. But yeah, the, the whole story behind it, um, I was telling you earlier, was that dude, his name was AI Root, and he uh, he was in, uh, he was a beekeeper, and he, they had all the wax from the bees, and then they started making candles is what the story I heard is. And um, it's been in business for like over a hundred years, I'm pretty sure. Oh, use the beeswax? Yeah, that's what the original candle was. Oh, we made out of beeswax. I wonder I don't how old anymore. this place is. Uh, well, there's over here on one of the buildings, I think it's like 1890 or something. Or oh, 18. wow. Oh, I guess back then everybody used candles. Yeah, yeah. That was, matter of fact, probably the biggest business commodity there could be. That and uh, kerosene, probably. Right. Yeah, there was no electric lights. I don't see that guy, do you? Uh, he's, over, he's over there, I think. I guess that was part of it at once. Yeah, I think that's like a, like a warehouse. I think they keep like, stuff in there. I don't know what, but it's a neat building. I love how the, the building curves along with the railroad track. I don't know oh, if you can see yeah. That. It's kind of a neat little... And what, is this dead end, or is it... Um, so we'll walk up there, but um, there's a switch up here, and then it goes on to the concrete place to the left, and then over to the, the paint, that spray products to the right. Oh, okay. Well, there is a lot of business in Medina. I never knew. Quite a bit. It just had something since the last rain. Yeah, pretty, pretty recent. See where the lip of that flange went. Yeah, I have a couple pretty cool videos of following the, the train and my truck coming around the corner here. This old crossover frog here. You can tell it's in pretty good shape still. See how sharp the corner is they usually grind them back down when they get worn so apparently they had it out here but it didn't last long they tore it out see how sharp that is man that's brand new it's just all rusted usually when you see stuff like this you can find the railroad date nails if you can find some ties oh here's some ties Let's see if I might find a railroad date now. Boy, that'd be something else. No. 
Oh, what line is this here? Uh, this, is, this was the B&O. Oh, so B&O right here from too. From Leicester to the north to uh, what's Sterling, I think, is the, the southern point. But it goes, you know, maybe a mile that way or half a mile, and then like two or three miles to the south, I guess. Well, where's the main line that goes like to Akron and through? That, that's the one that we were over there on. Oh, that's okay. The main I, I want to ride out of here so bad. If we could ever find out when that one sees a little more traffic once or twice a week, maybe, or a real short train more often. There's a what a depot. Yeah, it's a uh, antique place now. But they just uh, last year or the year before they just probably spent a fortune and repainted everything. They re Somebody came in and repainted the whole, whole depot. Looks really good. Well, there's a big old stack. Is that part of the candle? Yep. Yeah, yeah I think that was part of their... Uh, wow, that's bigger than I thought it would be. Good size. Sure about that. Here's that depot Matt was talking about. They drip did a lot of painting on I guess these were old loading doors for coming across another frog and crossover let's see how worn this one is now see the difference compared to the last one how rounded it they still in good shape here too but they'll take a grinder and grind that back pointy when it gets worn down. There's an old manual switch we can take a look at. I hear somebody. Oh, it must be a bar. Uh, it's a gym. Oh, same <laughs> thing. They're working out. <laughs> hey, look. Boy, I am very tired. You pick to find time to leave me loose, Will. There's a uh, the front of it. See how big that old wooden deck. Oh, that's been replaced. You just have another little dwarf signal or something that's been, it's gone now. All right, here again is the root candle. Now, Matt was showing me up here that he thinks right up here in this hole live bees have a hive. See that hole in the hive? It's supposed to be live bees or, or at one time there may have been. But isn't that pretty neat? I didn't even notice that until I zoomed in on my phone. They actually on the inside they have a, a hive in the wall and there's like a passageway in and out and um, so yeah it's just like a, a giant hive that's sitting in the wall and you can see all the bees from the inside it's kind of neat kind of like uh crispy cream donuts you get to watch them right. do the donuts all right and which way does the bno go this way uh, so it goes out this is to the west and it goes, there's two tracks all the way out to Smith Road, or is it Smith Road? Yeah, Smith Road. And then it, it um, comes back into just the main, the main one line headed west. All right. So. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm going to put Matt's link to his train videos in the description here. So go to the description and uh, I'll have his link there. And you can check out some of his good videos there too. All right, now we're down here where there's a plastics company and they make them little plastic beads that they remelt down later. I'm gonna see if I can find some where I can uh, show Matt, but I don't see any. That's good operation clean sweep there. They keep these clean. And I think there's a, a Jeep on the front of this, uh, an engine. We'll walk up here and see if we... 
I think I hear it running. Now, where's that plastic place yet? Is that the one that has all them dead end tracks? Yeah. Oh, okay. I remember seeing and that's west of, west yeah. part of town, huh? Yeah, just west of town. Uh, I think I'm starting to get to know Medina better than Johnson City now. <coughs> As you can tell, my throat is not as hoarse today. I got some fishermen's, I think that's what they're called, a brand of cough, uh, cough drops called fishermen's. They're, they're pretty loud, they, they're pretty good taste to them, but they work. All right, we got an engine coming up here. You can hear each piston do, 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 do. Off of here. Whoa, almost missed the step. Oh, he is a six axle. I wonder who that JJ Gonzalez is on there. Some of their engines have names like that. I don't know. Probably should yeah. Google it. Now, in Alaska, or the GM and E, they'll put different city names, okay. like City of Winona, Minnesota. They'll put on that one GM and E engine. Yeah, they see some pretty good traffic here. See how they got more traction effort with three axles on each. And they're all drive axles. You can see the winding house. See that right there? That's the electrical winding house that spins that a gear that spins the wheel. Don't see that too often either. There's the whole fuel tank. These smaller ones are usually 1,500, 1,200 gallons. But he's got, uh, he is full. 2,500 gallons of diesel. 2,500 gallons of diesel on it. It's topped off. Yeah, one of the advantages of having one, one of these versus those two Jeeps. They could just pull the other one. Sometimes I'll see like two big engines and a little one like this on a road train. Yeah, and there's the electrical. That's to hook up the other engine to tell it what to do. Since it's on the rear side, it'll read an opposite direction. I'll have to explain that in a video one day. That way you guys will understand how that operates. And that's it. And one other thing. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Stone Bears 13. Uh, 
I think I mentioned it before in a, a video, but uh, he's just getting started making some travel videos with that Stone Bear 13. Check it out. Check him out on YouTube. Anyway, uh, back out at Matt's place. I'm gonna spend a couple of days here and then catch a freight train out of here to who knows where next. Uh, maybe work my way west head up back up towards Alaska so I hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, as you can tell I'm still a little hoarse I went by CVS and got some of that it's not Sucret oat spray it's a <clears throat> another off brand chloris chlorosetin or something but it deadens the throat and help but anyway, I'm I'm a hundred and ten thousand percent better than I was last week. I'm over the hump and ready to blaze them rails now. Sorry, it was at night when I got on that freight train. I I just had no choice in the matter as far as it being day or night riding. All right, guys, later. Yeah, one more thing. I just want to tell everybody I appreciate you guys. Sticking with me through this sickness that I had and the surgery and all that and I really do because that shows you guys got heart and you stick around for me to do better I was going to show you a couple of things Matt has in his garden here that's why I wish I had a place I wasn't renting I could have a garden uh, he's got some tomatoes big tomato plant uh, just green right now uh, there's a there's an orange one back in there uh, you can always tell a tomato plant leaf and by the smell too they're kind of like bitter smelling but I know when growing up this one house we lived in in uh, Dover Arkansas uh, we had a bunch of Nandina bushes. Them Nandina bushes grow like wildfire. <clears throat> and check out that. Is that a bird feeder or what? He said it holds like, oh God, I forgot, uh, 300 pounds of bird seed or 80 or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's real tempered glass. Real shingle roof. <clears throat> Man, you could go on vacation for six months and the birds wouldn't run out of food. But that is one nice bird house. He said his grandfather made the original one and his dad made one off of it. And then they, they took, the, I guess, the frame and drew a pattern. And then uh, Matt made this one. And there's the one I got Matt for his birthday. <laughs> it looks so dinky and compared to the other one. Now that compared to my hand. Look how big that thing is. Isn't that cool? That's a unless they're feeding pterodactyls or some other big eagle bird. Man, look at that big old tree. I don't know if lightning struck that one or not. Yeah, lightning may have got that one. But the owls will be moving in then, woodpeckers. All right, again, I thank you guys for sticking with me through all that sickness. Just hope it don't happen again. I'm eating better, uh, getting more exercise. I'm drinking a lot more water than I ever have. I ain't going through that again, so I'm going to do my dangdest to not ever get that sick. I got too many important travel things to do. There's too many freight trains calling out my name wanting me to ride. But anyway, just thought I would thank you guys again.
You know, I guess that's it. They're probably parking to go to the line. This is kind of a lucky catch. This guy's coming in to, uh, coming in to Westbrook. Coming into Lester, Ohio with a few cars. Well, they're loaded, I can feel it. Got a flag on the back. He ain't going far. That was a lucky catch. Yeah, there's more traffic on this line than the mother two. They just did a bunch of work on the track where they swept the ballast back. See if there might be some old railroad ties with some date nails in them. Hmm, be hard to see. I almost need a metal detector. Hey, it's apple trees. Anyway. Yeah, me and Matt, we're in Leicester, Ohio. I'll probably be catching out tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I might go to Bellevue uh, or False Doria to catch out. Anyway, we're looking for train action today. He'll blow again, and again. Uh, I think he dropped a car or two. There's a lip grainer, that's the kind of grainer I rode here. Yeah, it's all going to a customer I thought he had five or six cars he didn't have time enough to drop it yeah out of all my travels I have never ever seen so many boxes together at once yeah as you can tell you can hear I'm still hoarse I bought some of that throat spray that tastes like you're spraying gasoline in your mouth. <laughs> but it does numb your throat, which I don't have a sore throat. I just have, I think, scar tissue is building up on my vocal cords. I hope it ain't permanent. It sound like Yoda or Grover from Sesame Street. But they're all brand new. Brand new railroad ties. There's a place in Vivian, Louisiana, between Texarkana and Treeport, that takes in raw railroad ties and they creosote them there. They put them in these big vats and pressurize them at like 900 degrees with that creosote and it forces it in there about an inch. That way they don't rot over time. But yeah, these, I guess when one needs putting in, they just come grab one, or they're doing a big project somewhere. Yeah, because there's a lot of maintenance away stuff here. All right, let's go somewhere else, guys. Well, look, it, huh, drive slow. They want you to hit this 
gait real slow instead of fast. Uh, we're breaking in, in. We're not breaking, but we're entering. Now, uh, where is it? What, what are we? What is uh, this? The, I think they call them the Northeast Ohio Live Steamer Club. And they run, I think it's seven and a half inch gauge here. And I, I think they have a couple miles of track. Oh. And it's all like this scale stuff here. Look at that. Man. They ought to put a little hobo camp with some Barbies and Ken. Well, even the railroad guys. Golly. Yeah, it's just held down with little nails. If they have a derail, it don't take much to fix it, I guess. Man, this is neat. Man, if I had property, this is... I was wondering what that switch. pipe went to. Yeah, it's a switch. They have a bunch of switches around, and that's how they operate them. Oh, it's spring. Oh, <clears throat> man. I could spend all day out here. Yeah, it's got the derail guard. Look at that crossover frog. <laughs> I feel like a big giant. And these are real, and I'm just that big Sasquatch. They run a lot on it, it looks like. Oh, yeah. I think every weekend. And usually during the week, there's somebody out here working on something, or I'm surprised there's no one around today. Whew, I got up too quick. I got about passed out. <laughs> Yeah, they run a lot on that one. I could search new. Yeah, I think it's like uh, aluminum rail, maybe, or something. Man, I wonder how many railroad guys are. Oh, look at that tree. 40 different branches coming out. Hello? Anybody in here? You remember that movie back in the 80s where... This girl finds a tree like this and drinks some water out of it, and it makes you live forever. No. And she, she goes through this thing where she could should have died, and she keeps accumulating all this bad stuff. <laughs> it, it's kind of like that Final Destination movie. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't remember that one. Oh, there. Is there cars up there? Uh, it's a little station. That's where, like, when they have the public, when they open it to the public, oh. that's where you catch your ride out of there. Oh, I see. Yeah, at first when we were coming down that road, I thought we were going to a real railroad. Let's see where they join it together, how they do it. I don't see it. Uh, here's one here. Oh, okay. <coughs> Man, I would love to have a job, like a volunteer out here. To... That's what I was telling you. If I got involved with these guys, I'd never get anything else done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a fleet. Oh, okay. Oh, uh-uh. I wonder what... They said they change it with air pressure. Uh, I think they can change the signal before they get to it, if they're moving slow. Oh, They grab I that see. handle down there, and then it throws the switch before they get to it. I see. I got you. Oh, okay. You switch it back. I feel like I shouldn't be walking on this. <laughs> God, this is so neat. Hey, make it look like a real train. This is just totally insane neat. Wonder what it says on that depot. Huh, one rail is shiny and the other Oh, same here. I guess they swap them out when they get old. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's focusing in. It's so bright out. Need a drink of water. Hmm. 
Yeah, it lets down. Like them ones on top of the buildings in New York City. Oh, there's it. Uh, I don't know why I'm fascinated with stuff like this. Hell, that's hot. <laughs> Yeah, you see there two or three miles of this yeah, all like together, a, huh? At least a mile, but I think like two miles or something. They got all the sidings and if you if we were to go way back in there, there's like a couple bridges and Oh really? I don't I don't know where they are exactly, but Man, this is, I, I would just live out here. I'd go camp somewhere nearby. Uh second water tower. That one looks a little more new or painted. There's a, a tower down there. Golly, yeah, well, instead of camping out, I'll just sleep in there. Growing up as a kid, the black eyed, we called them black eyed Susie's. But the black eyed Susan, my favorite flower. They grew everywhere in Arkansas. Wild. Well, here comes the Wheeling and Lake Erie. We're at the Wellington crossover. Hey, look at the diamond. He went to Jared's. You'll see them bolts and nuts rattle when they run over that diamond. I love that scene.
see where they repaired that. Put new metal and welded it. You have a different pieces there. One of them fell out. That in Harvey, Illinois, in that suburb of Chicago, there's a UP yard that's got a four-way, and there's little white mice that live inside the holes of them. Every time a train would go over, they'd go hide somewhere else. Oh, that scared me, that reflection. I thought that was another drain, that bright light. Yeah, that, that's the old Conrail box there, that brown in the blue mile marker. I don't know why Conrail was the only railroad that didn't paint their boxes. They were all brown with blue mile markers on it. Pretty shit. Oh, I didn't bring my paint marker. Hey, who's that? Got my shirt on. <laughs> yeehaw. I can't even do yeehaw my throat. Yeehaw. I sound, sound like a, a boar. You don't see too many of these double ones like this. In Chicago, you got like two running and then two running. Man, they were loud. All right, folks, we're gonna try to get up here. This is the Wheeling and Lake Erie Railroad trestle here. I'll get eat up by chiggers and ticks. Oh, all right, I made it up. I couldn't walk up under the trestle. That weeds were chest high. And I ain't getting no chiggers again. So I walked through the woods up. So, oh boy, I can tell I'm out of shape there. Holy mackerel, I gotta get in shape. Well, this is one way I'm doing it. The Wheeling and Lake Erie Railroad. Oh, there's no uh, where to get out of the way if there's a train. That's kind of eerie. That's kind of wheeling and lake eerie. But that train already passed an hour ago. So it'll probably be tomorrow. Before the next thing runs on this. Boy, it'd be like Stand By Me, that movie, if a train came. Well, they go slow enough that he could stop before running me over. And there's no roads to blow the horn at ahead or behind me for miles. So I'm not going to get no warning that way. There's a guard to keep rocks and stuff from falling in the road below. I better get off here. It'd be kind of... Uh, my shirt's not big enough to make a parachute out of. I think that was a uh, mat down there. Oh, God, a train behind me. Oh, crap. Oh, God, he's not stopping me. Psych. Psych. 
I ain't heard people use that word in years since high school. We used to trick people when they go psych. Or we'd, we'd say, get up. After we tricked them. Be like, hey, you got gum on your shoe? And they look and we'd go, get up. Or psych. Huh. I got a good hundred foot up, he said. Now to get back down. And there are thorns so bad, one got in my daggum ear and stuck. All right. Yep, all. <clears throat> it'll just take two or three weeks to get back in shape. I don't care. Next time I get deathly ill like that, I'm going to go to Lena Center and get me one of them uh, treadmills, I think. <sighs> All right. Hope you all enjoy that. Just when I think my throat voice is getting better, it, it's talking too much. And I think it's scar tissue. It might be permanent. Because I have, I test negative for COVID, pneumonia, and flu now. So it's just side effects. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed the uh, video so far.